Hello everyone, Matt Malatesta, uh, Bradley, Alex, where, where is Ogle? <laughs> Happy Halloween everyone, this is Matt Ogle, I am back. He is back. In black. <laughs> yes, he is. Spider-Man, Ogle, love it. He goes all out. It is Halloween week, which means we are getting close to the playoffs. The playoffs start <laughs> next Monday in volleyball. I can't believe it. All right, Ogle, I can't even look at you seriously <laughs> by this, but I'm going to go with it. All right, postseason, new playoff system. Very weird. Um, it's the first year. They're splitting it from uh, Division One, big school, little school. So... Talk to some people. Some like it. Some don't love it. What do you think? Well, I don't know. It's confusing for everybody because at this point we're like, okay, well, we know which big schools are going to be in, but where does it line up whenever it comes to all these teams we hope match up at some point? Uh, if you, based off of what I've heard, it seems like the teams that are finishing first and second are all going to go into D1, so we can at least get a clearer picture of who's going to be playing who down the line, and I think audiences are all for it. Okay. They play one less game. There's no regional tournament. The tricky part is scheduling um, the operations of it. How do they schedule gyms? Where are they going to play these games? Because they used to play a regional tournament, which is no longer the case. So it's kind of wonky, but I do like the fact that small schools play small schools, big schools play big schools, super competitive, and we get two state championships in each division. For volleyball. Obsessed with that. More gold for everybody. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about um, volleyball in the city of Houston. Do we think we will have a champion come out of the 6A D1, D2, 5A D1, D2 um, classifications this year? Well, um, 6A, there's definitely a strong possibility in terms of all the teams that are excelling houston has about 80 percent of them i really think grand oaks has a solid shot at going back to back they're gonna have to contend with cinco ranch gonna have to contend with fulcher uh also in the san antonio area harlan's fantastic o'connor's fantastic so there's gonna be a lot of fant awesome competition later down the line 5a i'm loving friendswood I don't think they're losing to anybody. They might have some challengers like Lake Creek and Barbers Hill in the third or fourth round, but it's, I don't see them losing. You're going Fringewood. <clears throat> okay, so here's the thing. Um, I don't know if you know this, but they do play Austin. They do, they, they play volleyball in Austin. Dripping Springs as well. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. They're yeah. like the number one team in the state. And uh, they also play it in Dallas called uh, Byron Nelson. Mm -hmm. Gang, gang, they're really good too. Um, okay, so um, I think it's kind of wide open. To be honest, in Region 3, where the city of Houston is, I think it's really wide open. I still like Cinco. I like Ridge Point. Um, I like Fulcher. Uh, it's going to come down to those three teams. Stratford, no one's talking about. They're only the number one team in the city of Houston. Stratford is going to be tough as well. Um, and then uh, 5A, I'm going to go with Fringewood. I do like Fringewood. I think Barbara Hill is going to be kind of good as well. But um, I think those are the two kind of superpowers. They're also going to have to contend with... Superpowers, no pun intended. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Do, 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 oh do. Halloween 2024. They're going to also have to contend with A&M Consolidated. That's a really good team. College sure. Station is pretty good too. So I got to know. Mm -hmm. I got to know. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Ooh, I love me some gummy worms. Skittles are great too. I'm more of like the fruit gummy type of a uh, fan. I do like some chocolate every now and then. What about you? Um, I'm more of a Twix guy. I love Twix. I do love a Twix and a Kit Kat. Kit Kat can't go wrong with Kit Kat. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Yeah. Sponsor yeah. us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we talked about also, who has been the biggest surprise this year? Mine is Stratford. I know you probably like Stratford also for this answer, but who else do you think is a big surprise? Well, I would argue Katie Taylor. That And they're still, it's not decided yet. They did just lose one to Jordan, and 
They have a one game advantage this week. They're playing Katie Taylor's playing Tompkins, whereas Jordan is playing Paytow. So if Jordan wins and Taylor loses, then Jordan becomes a playoff team. Otherwise, regardless of what happens, I think I've been really impressed by Katie Taylor. They've contended with some of the best of them. They play in arguably the second best district in the state. Number one would be 13 sticks of Grand Oaks and the Woodlands, yada, yada, yada. But they have to play Cinco twice. They have to play Tompkins and Seven Lakes twice. Jordan is, as I just mentioned, they're scrappy. But they've really showed their guns here. And I would not be surprised if they make it into the playoffs and make a few rounds. Yeah, they'll be playoff ready because they play in such a tough (laughs) district. Fulcher, (laughs) Fulcher's really good as well. However, they breeze through district. Me, you, Bradley Collier, and Alex Henson, and Jackson DePasquale, we could maybe get into the playoffs from that district. What say you? Fulcher, definitely. Uh, Foster's pretty good, too. But they're all right. They're all right. They are. Fulcher, yeah, it's it's pretty much been their, their district for the past decade. Okay, so um, I was going to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, who the all-timers in the city of Houston have been. Speaking of superpowers, what girls in the city of Houston during the time of Vibe, who have been the superpowers in the city of Houston. Well, okay. I think you have a little more expertise on that matter. I've only been here for about two years. Who is your superpower girl of the year this year? Hmm. Who's the MVP? Uh, I think Bailey Warren. Bailey Warren for full sure. We obviously talk about Cassie O'Brien, and she's the best setter in the uh, state. Uh, bar none. So it's I think it's between those two because there's a lot of other heavy hitters, but I think in true game changer fashion, those two kind of take the cake. Okay, so here we go. Matt's all time favorite volleyball players in the city of Houston since Vipe has been around 18 years ago. Number one, Ali ba- Batenhorst from Seven Lakes completely dominated the scene. She went from Nebraska, now she's at USC. That's number one. Number two, Yossi Presley, whoo, she was amazing. She was at Cy Falls, then she goes to Baylor, she plays professional, she was amazing. Maddie Skinner at Texas, homeschooler, not sure where, she didn't really play high school volleyball, but she is the best player probably in NCAA volleyball as today. Maddie Skinner, uh, Courtney Eckenrod played the Woodlands, great setter, went to Missouri, now is the head coach at John Cooper, amazing setter. Um, Katie Messing from the Woodlands played at Pepperdine, superstar, Under Armour, played in the professional ranks over in Europe. Katie Mitchell from College Park, another giant outside hitter middle that played at Ohio State. Reagan Rutherford, of course, she played at Ridgepoint. She's a star this year. She plays at UT. And finally, Skylar Fields from Ridgepoint as well. She was awesome. Just Racked up kills after kills after kills. She also plays professionally. She played at USC. Okay, so that's Matt's hottest, best Mount Rushmore, best volleyball players in the city of Houston over the past 20 years. Okay, back to the show. Ogle, Mm -hmm. favorite costume of all time besides (laughs) this? Uh, I think the one that took the most work, I think it was a little crazy, was whenever the first Suicide Squad movie was released, everyone was really pumped about being the Joker, Uh, even though Jared Leto sucked as the Joker. It was a cool look, kind of. You put all, I had to do all these tattoos, dyed my hair, went all out. Uh, It was pretty fun. I think the most fun experience, Halloween-wise, dates back to whenever I first got this. Uh, It was not my first job. And I ended up walking in like this, trying to be incognito or mysterious, like I deep in my voice. And uh, my manager, it was like this girl in her 20s, she's like, hey, Matthew. And I'm like, who's Matthew? Uh, and I ended up uh, getting her to come up to the counter. And little did she know, I had two cans of Silly String and I started webbing her. Uh, and I ended up pinning her up against the oven. And everyone was laughing. Kids were like, look, Mom, it's Spider-Man. And it, it was a very fun experience. What about you? What's the craziest Halloween experience you got? Man, that is really, really good. Um, I have been Run DMC before. That was hot. Super hot. You can't miss with Run <laughs> DMC. 
Um, that was probably my favorite. You know, there's all these other corny outfits that are date the time. How about this? This year, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. That would be a good concert. I've seen that out and about. Um, okay, so that is the sixth rotation. Spider-Man, Matt Ogle, Matt Malatesta. We'll catch you at the games. Like and subscribe on all this content that we're pushing out on our YouTube channel as well as our website and all of our social media channels. Again, Matt Malatesta, Matthew Ogle, we'll see y'all at the games. Happy Halloween, mother...